What's up guys, in today's video, I wanna to talk to you about how to reduce the amount of herbicides that we use on food plots. Now, I don't wanna get into a huge debate whether they're good, bad. I'm not against them. I prefer not to use them. If you wanna use them, it's totally up to you. For myself, I try to get around that and it's very beneficial to do so when you don't use them. In some cases, you will have to use them. For instance, what I'm gonna explain on this video is on perennial food plots such as clover perennials. On clover perennials, sometimes you will have to use an herbicide to kill grasses and weeds that's growing in your clover plot. Because what's the point of having a clover plot year after year after year if it's just full of weeds and grasses? Yes, I'd say in probably 60 to 80% of the time, you can probably control those weeds and grasses with mowing because mowing when you when you mow that whole thing a lot of times it'll give that clover a jump start and it can it can kind of surpass that you know grasses and and weeds that's growing uh in that perennial food plot so i've had perennial food plots for a very long time and i've controlled them with uh mowing some cases it works some cases it doesn't it just really depends on how many grasses and weeds that you have coming up and if you mow that before those grasses and weeds become a seed head because if you're mowing after that you're spreading seeds and it's gonna you know regrow back in your food plot so on my approach to this because I don't want to use herbicides I'm not against them uh, if I have to use them I will but I'd say probably 90% of the time I don't use them and with a perennial plot I'm actually getting away from perennial clover plots because like I said sometimes mowing works sometimes mowing doesn't to control the weeds so in my approach I'm strictly going to be doing annuals therefore all kind of noises out today but uh, I'm going to annuals therefore with annuals I can kind of set myself up you know through through the fall to where in the spring things are co coming back up to where I don't have to spray and have to deal with weeds and grasses so with that approach and what i'm doing as you can see behind me is this field is nothing but clover and winter wheat um and we planted this in the fall and i'll throw some footage over you know planting it and how it looked you know back in september october november but uh there's not any weeds in this plot there's no grasses it is all winter wheat and there's just bunches and bunches of clover so when in the next three weeks or so, maybe three and a half, four, we're gonna be coming back, disking all of this back in. And that is very beneficial for the soil because it creates green manure. And a lot of people have issues with um, moisture issues, you know, the soil drying out, and that is because they spray the green in their plots before they disk. And when you do that, you're drying out that plant you're drying out the root system. So when you do turn that back in, you go to plant, there's no moisture left. Then you end up with soil erosion because you done killed everything and it's dead and it's dry. So it can't, when you turn that back in, there's no, you know, kind of, there's no organic matter to hold that soil together. So you end up with more erosion. So with this approach, and we've been doing this for years, is you just turn the green manure back into the soil. It it allows to dry in that soil naturally, hold moisture, so when you go to plant, your uh, soil doesn't evaporate and you're left with, you know, dry, just dry soil. It actually holds that in there for longer periods of time to allow that to help, you know, allow that new seed to germinate. So with setting this up is in the fall, you always want to plant some sort of cereal grain. I recommend mixes, wheat, oats, and rye. I would not plant straight rye. I probably would not plant straight uh, wheat, and I definitely would not plant plant straight brassicas. Um, when you plant brassicas, it's kind of like that dessert. You know, it's like that ice cream to a food pot. Deer absolutely love brassicas. They may not eat the bulbs, but they'll definitely eat the leaves. And when you plant just brassicas, okay, they're not growing back. A deer takes a bite of that brassica leaf; it does not grow back. So. In the spring, you know, early spring when everything's starting to green up, you're left with bare soil. And that is probably one of the worst things that you want to end up with. So if you mix 
you know, a, a wheat, oats, and rye type plot with a little bit of brassicas in the spring, it's the very first thing, you can even throw some clovers in there, um, but it's the very first thing to green up. And we're in almost, uh, well, this is the uh, first, first week of May. This plot has been green for months because you get those warm days in February and March and everything starts to grow, especially the wheat and rye. The, um, the oats die in the fall after you get a few hard frosts, but they're in there because they're very palatable. The oats in a mixture, you plant those oats, they're very high in sugar content and they're very palatable to deer early into the year, but you get those first few frosts and then they die out, then the wheat and rye takes over. But in the spring, here we are now, like I said, first week of May, everything is green. There is some clovers in here as well that we threw in. So there's absolutely no reason to kill this plot with herbicides when I can just come back through, disc this back in to create all this organic matter, green material, green manure, and nutrients back into the soil. And we'll come back through in the next three weeks or so and plant our food plot. So there's absolutely no reason to kill this. Now, if I planted this plot in straight brassicas and nothing else, no cereal grains, then yeah, this plot would probably be full of weeds and it'd be it have bare soil for many months throughout the winter and even early spring and then all the weeds are gonna pop up because it has plenty of room for weeds to grow. So you may have to kill that in that instance. Um, sometimes you may not, it just depends really how bad it, and bad that it is. And if people want to use herbicides, I would recommend on your first initial planting, say you have a field that has never had anything done to it or hasn't had anything done to it in years. If you, you know, want to use herbicides, if you feel like you do, on your first planting of the year, come through and spray herbicides. That way it'll kill everything in that plot. If it needs it, it may not need it. It just depends what's growing in there. On your first initial spraying, it's going to kill everything with Gly and you know 2,4-D. It's going to kill everything. After that, as long as you plant the right species of plant, you can manage that food plot without using any additional herbicides. I would rather spend my money on additional seed, additional fertilizer, additional lime than using more money to to pay for herbicides. That's you know I just don't want in my food plots. So that's one way to do that, guys. Add cereal grains to your plots in the fall. It's the very first thing to green up. Don't kill this. There's no reason to kill this food plot with herbicides and dry it out and disc it back in. There's no point. We're gonna take this plot and we're gonna show you guys this whole process through the, through the summer and you know even into the fall. When we go to plant, we're gonna disc this back in. There's clovers in here. We're gonna disc it in very good. It's gonna hold that moisture for longer periods of time. It's gonna hold the soil together. And you can see back over here, it's another winter wheat field. And then way over there is a uh, clover field and we're actually disking this whole field up. We got a bulldozer uh, coming tomorrow, or a uh, skid steer coming tomorrow, and we're ripping out another acre of pines over to my left here. And this whole field is gonna be a total of three acres. We're coming through and we're planting soybeans. We're gonna fence it off for about 30 days with a dual perimeter electric fence for about 30 days, and maybe 40 days, depending how you know high it gets, ankle high or something, or you know up, almost knee high in about that 30 to 40 day mark. And what we're gonna do with that is, it's gonna uh, uh, supply massive amounts of nutrition to the deer because there's no ag fields around here. It's gonna have high pressure. So that's why we want to put that fence on there for 30 to 40 days. It's gonna supply massive amounts of nutrition, micronutrients, protein, everything you can think of. Uh, inside of this as well is going to be uh, rows of Egyptian wheat. And we're gonna show you how to plant that as well with the Ferminator. And you don't need a ferminator, but we're gonna plant that, allow straight rows with that uh, to divide sections into the plot. Come fall time, all those beans, what's left is getting tilled back in because it's only three acres of beans. When the leaves turn yellow on these beans, the deer are gonna be gone. They don't eat the, be the beans when they turn yellow. So it would be s stupid to leave these standing because yeah, I could leave them standing, and then come November, December, you got the pods, the deer are gonna eat the pods, but they're gonna wipe them out. We have a lot of deer, so we don't wanna do that. So we're using those beans for the soil. We're gonna disc those back into the soil come fall time, and this whole three acres is gonna be a mix of probably a little bit of clover, 
wheat, rye, oats, and probably a little bit of brassicas for ice cream. So if you guys don't want to use herbicides or if you have used herbicides in the past and you want to get away from that, it's all about prepping your situation, prepping your soil the year before going into the spring, okay, the, the fall before going into the spring with wheat and rye and some clovers. Therefore, it's the first thing that greens up and in the spring, you have no weeds, guys, and you can till that back in and you have great, beautiful, healthy food plots. If you have any questions, drop a comment down below. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you guys are new. I'll see you guys on the next video.